walked away. And seven days later, Mr. Speaker, I rise to raise an objection. Can I proceed? Mr. Speaker, we owe the Deputy President very elementary decency. We owe it to the Deputy President to be basically decent in these proceedings. I want to know whether counsel at the bar, one, can adduce this kind of evidence that is not contained in any evidentiary material before the Senate. I want to know which ground in the 11 grounds in the impeachment motion is this evidence from the bar supporting. I repeat, Mr. Speaker, we owe the Deputy President the most basic decency. I object. Senior Council Orango, those abutments, are they contained? They are, they are contained. They are all here. They and are refer all, to the document. Volume 4. I, I am not referring because if I've got to refer to every document, we we'll take a lot of time. And I have only 30 minutes. Uh, if you look at Volume 4 uh, of this document on public participation, uh, from page page uh, the volume four of the national assembly of the national assembly pages pages 114 to yes and in fact this this page is also called tend the will and the deputy president is the one who is relying on this will. Uh, the death certificate is contained on page 119. And it shows the only person who attended the disease, the brother of the deputy president at that time, was his daughter, was the only person uh, present. And then there is the will. And in the documents on page 128, and this is why I, I was raising this matter, on page 128 there is a letter by Mr. Madenge and Mr. Njoroge Rigeru who together with Mr. Rigazi Gachagua were the joint will ex executors. And they are complaining about the conduct and action of the deputy president as an executor of the will and a family member of the late Nderitu Gachagua on page 129. Paragraph eight, there, and it says, from bank statements to this, for this account seen by us, you transferred some funds from this account to other persons as follows. On the date, on, on, when Deritu Gachagua died on the 24th, the deputy president was already withdrawing money on the day he died, on the day he died, and that day when he died, he was there only with his daughter. And then they say on the 19th of May, 2017, again, another money was withdrawn and paid to Mrs. Oamunyuro Investment Limited. This story, you will find it in the documentation and part of it is what Mr. Njomo was saying. Counsel for Deputy President, just have your seat. When your time comes, you'll be able to make the rebuttals. Proceed, uh, Senior Counsel. How many minutes do I have? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I respect your direction. I'm willing to take a seat right away, but just to point out something. The document you are being referred to is the document you held in abeyance 
no, because no, it was given to us no, later no, no, no. for purposes of no, our no. consideration. That's number one. Number two, Mr. Speaker, you remember that my learned colleague talked about how my client traveled to London, how without talking to any doctor, these are factual claims, Mr. Speaker, that are just coming from the bar. Mr. Speaker, number three, the opening statement speaks to the motion and the grounds in the motion. I beseech this House direct that parties restrict themselves to the motion and the grounds in the motion. The facts you are now being uh, referred to have no basis in the motion and the grounds in the motion, unless the Senior Council, His Excellency uh, Governor Rengo, can draw your attention to any ground in the motion that those facts are now addressing. Yeah. I repeat what I said, Mr. Speaker, the ruling is yours. We owe it to the Deputy President and the integrity of our checks and balances institutions to maintain basic decency in this proceedings. Yeah, yeah. I rest. Uh, in fact, now, uh, uh, councillors, I cannot tell you how you're going to make your opening statements. If you're going outside the allegations, that's up to you. The senators are here listening, and they'll be able to make the necessary decision at the end of it. Now, Senior Council Orengo, there's an abandonment that you've made that the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, on a certain date that you indicated, traveled to London. Yes. The, the to evidence visit is. His sick brother. Yes. And on the side of the sick bed, he made his brother sign a will. Is that contained anywhere in the documents if, from the National Assembly? My, my, my Lord, if, if, I, you are, if, Mr. Speaker, if you look at volume four from the pages that I, I indicated, right from page 113, it shows what flight he took, at what time, a British Airways flight on the, 17th, on, on the 16th, and arrived in London on the 17th, the only business that comes out from that document and his documents is that he got a will signed and there is no further evidence of his activities in London until 24th when the only activity in which he didn't participate was to be present when his brother died in London. But all this I'm saying in relation to the allegations that we have against the Deputy President. Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, uh, Council, ordinarily, yes. Yes. no objections are raised during the 30 minutes of the opening statement. Yes. Ordinarily. Yes. I have tried to accommodate, but now we are, you are stretching my generosity a bit too far. Allow Senior Council Orengo to conclude in your opening statement, you may choose now, now, what, to make a rejoinder. What I want to conclude is this. From what I've said, from the way his brother's account were raided, that was continued in, to the time when all life guidance was acquired for a, a 